Welcome to Dajobnik, your command post for clarity and perspective. Mr. President, for the past two years, Israel has stood alongside the people of Ukraine in solidarity, both on the ground and here in the United Nations. This is the moral thing to do, especially as a country that knows exactly how it feels to be aggressively invaded, to have our towns and cities attacked, and for our civilians to be the targets of indiscriminate missile fire. The State of Israel has always and will continue to remain committed to Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Distinguished representatives, Israel has shown its support for Ukraine not only through words, but also through actions. Israel sent more than 100 tons of humanitarian equipment to our Ukrainian allies within one week of the Russia's, Russians' invasion. We also established a field hospital within Ukraine's border, which treated over 7,000 injured. Hundreds of Ukrainian patients have also been treated in hospitals and, and rehabilitation centers across Israel. From rehabilitation programs to post-traumatic therapy, Ukrainians have received the best possible care that Israel has to offer. Israel is also working to provide Ukraine with early warning systems to save civilian lives from Russia's indiscriminate missile and drone attacks. We were forced to develop an expertise in this field, and we are happy to share our capabilities with our Ukrainian friends in need. Colleagues, two years ago, Russia, with disdain for its neighbor's sovereignty and territorial integrity, invaded Ukraine, causing tragic loss of human life and immense damage to civilian infrastructure. 143 days ago, the brutal terror organization of Hamas, in utter violation of international law and also complete disdain for Israel's sovereignty, invaded the Jewish state, murdering, raping, and destroying anything they could lay their hands on. Both of our countries, Ukraine and Israel, are fighting a battle for our survival. We are now living in an era during which forces of instability act with impunity. International law be damned, morality be damned, and peace and security be damned. But today, not only do these forces use military power or terror, but they have another tool. They have converted the UN and its bodies into a weapon against freedom and liberty. This is what the UN has become. Today, the Security Council cannot fulfill its basic mandate to defend sovereign states from invasion or even condemn violence. Whether it comes to combating the aggression that Ukraine defends itself against or the terror that Israel defends itself against, the Security Council is paralyzed, paralyzed in the face of violence and the entire UN system is being held hostage by political interests. For purely political reasons, neither the Security Council nor this body has condemned Hamas or its massacre. The audacity of those who invade others and attack civilians to baselessly lecture the law-abiding democracy of Israel on international law is the perfect example of how destructive this institution has become. Listen to this. This week, Russia will be hosting a Hamas delegation in Moscow, and not for the first time. Russia is one of the only places outside of the Middle East where Hamas terrorists and Houthi, Houthi jihadists are given the red carpet treatment, even after October 7th. Russia is hosting those who are responsible for intentionally murdering babies, raping women, and burning families alive. But this meeting in Moscow is a result of something more broad, more dangerous. Russia is now deepening its ties with global forces of destabilization. 
It is no secret that Hamas is merely one tentacle of Iran's terror armies. This horde of death and destruction includes Hezbollah, the Houthis, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and other terror organizations. They are funded, they are trained, they are armed and directed by Iran. Iran is responsible for the attacks on American service members. Iran is behind the Houthis' attacks on maritime trade, and it is Iran who supplies Russia with the drones that are attacking Ukrainian civilians. As we sit here now, focusing on words and not actions, an alliance is being strengthened and the international community stands idle. The axis between the Ayatollah regime in Tehran, the Assad regime in Syria, the Kim regime in North Korea, and the Maduro re regime in Venezuela is deepening, and Russia is moving closer to them. These countries are now standing in solidarity as the free world stands on the sidelines divided. Do you not see what we all face? Are you not worried about our values and interests? If the UN cannot do anything to prevent aggression, then there is no longer any justification for this organization to exist. If this body is incapable of standing up for, to violent attacks, yet demonizes those combating the threat posed to all of us, then the UN has lost all legitimacy. Ambassador Kislitsia, Israel will continue to stand by Ukraine. We have both experienced an invasion. We have both experienced brutalities. We will forever bear these scars. Yet, if inaction continues to be the modus operandi of this organization, every other member of the free world will eventually bear these scars too. We, Israel and Ukraine, are the canaries in the coal mine. To the rest of the free world, I say, wake up, wake up. Thank you, Mr. President. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dajabnik signing off.